I'm Mike and this week I'll be transforming some old pallet wood into this unique outside seat using techniques that anyone can follow along with at home. Make sure to tune in for part two next week when I refine this design and add a load of unnecessary joinery in my pro version. So yeah, that's enough of me rambling. Let's get on with the build. So step number one is to go through my stockpile of pallet wood and sand up the rough surfaces to give me a place to mark and better joints. This does take a long while, but trust me, it is worth it. So for this project, there's a series of repeated angles, a 50 degree angle. But you don't have a, a bevel square like this that you can lock down. Simple thing is to make a jig. So I'm going to start with just my piece of timber here. I'm going to mark a point down along here. And simply using tracks that you had in school, line up all of those lines exactly where you want them. You know it's a 50 degree angle, so I mark up my 50, hang in my ruler, mark one through the other, and I have my 50 degree angle. What you're going to do then is cut along that and make a little fence. So I'll do that now. Once I have the angle out, what I want to do is get a piece of scrap that's just barely wider than what we're using. And then we're just going to screw that piece of scrap down, leaving a little bit out on either side. That'll be our fence for marking. I'm going to move it back a little bit so it doesn't interfere with my angle. Just for now here, I'm just going to put this on with a bit of super glue again, making sure I have a little bit sticking out either end. I'll stick a screw in there later to secure it. Just cut off that. What's left of the fence. That means then that Every time we score that angle, it's coming off the same piece, which means it's always going to be the same angle. And because you have that fence sticking out both sides, you can repeat it, use it on whatever side you need. The really important factor is not necessarily having it to the exact angle to stair, but matching all the angles. So that's why this, you know, obviously a little bit of glue there has cleaned up. But so that's why this, or you know, set your, your bevel square you can set is important. Because even if, let's say, you make this and it's a degree out, because you're flipping over and it's a fraction of 90, if you keep using this same angle, it'll work out for you. So that's a good top tip. So what I'm doing here is I'm marking everything out roughly, slightly oversized, and then I will cut all of my angles in one direction on the saw at once. This means that, as I said before, if I'm slightly out, everything is the same. And when I have it all cut, what I do is I mark everything off one piece. You'll see me do that later. This is the most accurate way to ensure that everything is exactly the same when you're replicating pieces. Now it's Cutty cutty time, so it's going to be music time for you because you don't need to hear all this. But as I previously said, I'm cutting all of these 40 degree angles first. That's why I marked everything out with a little bit of slack. And then when I have it cut at 40 degrees, I then go ahead and do all my straight cuts. And the length then is defined off the first one I cut because I'm just replicating the same thing again and again to make sure I have all the cuts the same length. Now of course I'm using my chop saw here but it's the same principle if you're cutting it with a hand saw at home.
so for the center spars because <clears throat> we're doing this like um as a half up center spar is going to go up like this so our outside one is going to be full height but our inside one is going to be missing this by two so the simplest way to do that is to use what you want to cut out of it so i know this needs to be 600 so i mark my 600 and make a light non-cut line and there's a broken line so i know not to cut along it and then line it up with that so i've taken a mark this with my broken line so i know not to cut it line it up like this and then another broken line and then finally I put a little mark there and I'm using this off cut which is at the same angle I know I'm using the right angle and then wallop and that way right, if the pen worked <laughs> and then I just score along there I know that's my full line, I just want to scribble these, make sure I don't do them. That's the easy way to work out the height of those guys. So I need two number of those, and then two number of the longer ones for the outside. You can see they line up there, bang on. Look at me thinking I'm clever cutting. Oh, give it a second. <clears throat> it was at this point he realised he'd... So that good little trick I showed you with the longer pieces should have done with half of these as well. Oh well, more firewood. <laughs>
you can clamp it all down and then put in temporary fixing. You can see I did it there with a few pins. That's just to save on clamps. I'll be doing a load of filling on these anyway. So those couple of extra little nails are not going to do any harm. I wanted to do all this in one glue up. Uh, so that's how I got around it. But you can do the same with screws or whatever and fill them. So with the diagonals, what I did here to ensure that it was set up perfectly to line in, I just screwed in a piece that's the exact same thickness as my top and bottom and used that as my place to hold while the glue was setting. I also stuck a few pins in to make it sure it wouldn't move. So I just did this for the two diagonals and it, it worked out really well in the end. Everything required very little trimming, so I was very happy. Once everything had dried, then I just squared up all my edges with a hand plane. But you don't need to hear me talking anymore. How about some music? Alright, so now we have everything nice and set up. It's time to put our splay. I'll just dry assemble everything to make sure I have it right. Now I'm going to take it to 45 here. Uh, I'm using a pen here rather than a pencil because it'll show up a lot easier on the, show up a lot easier on the rough palette. So I uh, got this one and then similar to what I did in the chop saw. I'm going to use it as a template to mark all the rest of them. So, cutting it. How do we cut it? Can you cut it? Well, that's up to you, I suppose. But I'll show you a few ways. So, I've scored along that line now. I know what my waist is. So, I'm going to get a knife. Using my square. I've got a nice score line in. Like that. And here the chisel. Move a little bit to clear the shelf. Take it down. A little bit clear the shelf. And start in the vertical dimension. So this is a very handy way of doing it. If you have a vice, just vice it and follow it down. It'll take a while, but you'll get there. Now, I am very lucky to have this vice. What if you don't have a vice? Well, same, same, but different. Let's say you have an old kitchen table with an apron. Just got a clamp. Clamp to the apron. Mightn't be as steady, but you can hold it in place. You keep cutting. Or you can use the oldest clamp known to man, your knee. Nice low bench. And just wait for the magic. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming now! Not too bad. Finish line to plane. It's a little bit off, not that much. It's a lot of work. Then we can stand there. Then we simply use this guy to mark the rest of them, leaving a bit of a line that allows the plane down to finish. So once we have all those tapers done, the next step is to glue it up. So at the joints here, I'm adding a couple of screws for a little bit of strength. It also saves me having to clamp it up. Once I have this done and it's dry, my next step is to pre-drill and countersink the top slats. Put it all together and put a bit of finish on it. Top tip here when you're drilling through is to use a sacrificial piece on the back to stop blowout. Another top tip is to make sure that that sacrificial piece is deep enough for you to do like I did and accidentally drill a hole in your brand new tabletop like a complete idiot. 
So what I'm doing here is I'm just attaching the central spar that I have across the middle. And this is a handy little thing I just came up with. I'm just going to position it with a little bit of CA glue. That'll hold it long enough for me to put the screws in. Makes it a lot easier when you only have one pair of hands to do this job. And now to put on those top slats, give it a dry test and apply some finish. Uh, this turned out a lot better than I thought. But before I applied the finish, I filled and sanded all the old holes from nails and such and uh, sand it between coats. So overall I have to say I'm very happy how this turned out. I gave it two coats of Danish oil to protect it from the weather and yeah it's it's really sturdy. I stood up on it, I've jumped on it, I've done everything I can to break it. So make sure to tune in next week to see me make the pro version where I make this far more complicated than it needs to be. Um, like, subscribe and absolutely do try this at home. Hi, I'm Mike. And this week I've taken a lot of scrap pallets and turned it into a unique uh, unique New York. <laughs> unique unique New York. Unique unique New York. Hi, I'm Mike, and this week I have been eating mostly moss! <laughs>